The world of virtual reality is a revolutionary concept which makes real looking glass into a world where everyone is wearing the skin of fictional characters. Simply put, I've never seen anything like it in my six years making videos online. And that looking glass vision applies to VTubers, an industry where entertainers are anime avatars. In virtual reality, anyone can be everyone. Well, that is until your camera fails. In an age where parasociality is becoming an increasingly concerning issue, virtual reality is a difficult place to comprehend or even police. You can spend days talking to someone and because you feel like it's a real world, you open up. You meet people you can relate to, you show your vulnerable side, and you often forget that you don't really know who's behind that avatar. Today's video is on a topic relating to that. I Milky was never one of the VTubers Hall of Fame, in fact her comeuppance was relatively tiny, but the story behind it all is a pretty interesting tale, about how some can use anonymity to their advantage in pretty awful ways. Let's explore the story of the elusive VTuber criminal. Where does someone begin with the story of iMilky? Well, the beginning is a disjointed mess of dates and times, and for a channel that only had around 5,000 subscribers and is now deleted, putting this case into an understandable order is difficult. That being said, it's only fitting if we start at the beginning. In 2015, a Brooklyn resident by the name of Yosel Rodriguez created his Minecraft account. Whatever this account was named has been lost to time, but this account creation is understandable. Minecraft was and still is a pretty popular game where millions log on every single day to have fun. But for iMilky, their intentions seem to be very different. Why? Well, 2015 was also the year that Minecraft YouTubers were starting to be exposed for their heinous interactions online with fans. And the reason I question iMilky's motives is because just one year later, they would be exposed for the same things. In 2016, Joseph Rodriguez was arrested by authorities after the 23-year-old was caught soliciting explicit acts from a 13-year-old. The two had met on Minecraft and had been talking to each other for a while whilst iMilky was using a fake name. And after getting the 13-year-old Skype, he enticed this girl to form sexual acts for him over the app. This included pictures and video calls. Some time passed until the 13-year-old's father looked through a tablet and found the disgusting interactions, immediately reporting it to the NYPD. Investigators eventually got the go-ahead after tracking iMilky's location to Brooklyn, and then raided his house, finding over 100 videos and images of suspected CP. To quote the sheriff himself, a great father and good teamwork among law enforcement resulted in this bad guy being held at Rikers. Parents, please monitor your children's electronics and know that there are sexual predators trolling on the net to find vulnerable children. If you ever find anything inappropriate, please call us and make a report. We need your partnership to keep these children safe and put these monsters where they belong. Now, to be fair, I'm not sure if they knew what trolling meant, and also in the news video, they used this clip of how to spawn Herobrine in Minecraft Pocket Edition as a representation of Minecraft. The two had met earlier playing the popular game Minecraft online. Either way, after being arrested, Rodriguez is held in a cash bill for $30,000 at Rikers Island in New York City, and eventually sentenced with probation until 2026. So, yeah, not a great start to your Minecraft career. I want to show this first because I think it's important to set up the basis for this person's later career and involvement online, as well as the overall message of utilising anonymity. As you'll see, for the next two years, barely anyone knew of iMilky's actions, and throughout the rest, they would try many times to utilise this strength. In 2017, iMilky's first recorded logs of online activity were found under a new name known as Pumpernite, now Videl Rose. They also had a frequent posting account known as Lou Chiliark, although this has now been deleted and archives could not be found. Now, a lot was lost from this account due to only being active for three months, but for what we can see, three major things happened during this time that will be relevant in a bit. Firstly, around this period, iMilky transitioned from male to female. Normally, if this happened today, no one would really mind, but for an era like 2017, where the internet was a lot more abrasive, the fact that Milky transitioned showed that they mostly hung around progressive communities online. Hey, what's up guys, it's Pumpkin Knight, and this is just a little introduction to my channel. I know it's not an actual video, it's more of like an audio thing, but it's just to clarify a couple things. Um, yes, in, one, in my application video, I did sound like a female. Uh, basically, my channel is based off me being who I truly am and mentally I feel feminine so I at some point I'm gonna be 
using girl voices for some videos. If that bothers you, no one's forcing you to stay, feel free to leave. But if you support that, thank you so much, it means a lot. Um, yeah, just wanted to clarify that. Secondly, three videos have actually been archived from the Pump and Out channel, which stands on a measly six subscribers. These three videos include a channel intro that I just showed, as well as a Skywars gaming video. Hi everybody, it's Pumpkin Knight, and I'm here with Malora. Hello. And today we're on High Pickle, about to play some Skywars. You ready? E. Alright, let's do this. So this is actually the first time I'm recording with someone on this channel. It's uh, a little interesting, actually. Um, I feel honored. <laughs> um, we're still getting to know each other, so it's a learning experience for both of us. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but... But most importantly, their first video was an application to the Ethereal SMP. Hello, my name is Pumpkin Knight, and this is my application video for the Ethereal SMP server. So, there's a few questions that I'm going to answer, and yeah. So let me just pull them up real quick. Um, so, there's four questions here. Have you been in any other SMPs? No, I have not. Um, I do hope to join this one though, and you'll find out why in a second. <laughs> um, would you like to be in this SMP? Because I've seen a few of the girls' channels, and I really like their content. They seem really friendly, and I'm always down for making new friends. I mean, who isn't, right? <laughs> This also makes sense as Minecraft's rising video subgenre at the time was things like ultra hardcore SMPs. And again, this will be a lot more relevant later. And finally, the last important thing to note here is the archives of tweets from the Twitter account, which are pretty extensive for an account that was only around for three months. So, is there a consistent theme between these tweets? Well, because we don't actually know who Videl Rose was tweeting to, this ominous tone kind of presides around the account. The only consistent patterns I could find was tweets about loneliness and constantly getting into arguments with their friends. Word of advice, guys, no matter how you meet new people, even if they're friendly, don't be deceived. It could be fake. Deleted the tweet because she didn't even look at it when she was active. This is why I feel like I should just stay alone. The fact that I took the time to make a render for someone just shows how much I care. Making something for Catgirl Forever YT, because I feel like I need to apologise for my idiotic actions. So anyone aware of my current situation? Any recommendations slash suggestions? Anyone want to collab? I'm lonely. I'm trying. I'm genuinely trying here. I'm simply not enough. I'm sorry for being me, for being different. I'm sorry. It's the thought that counts, and I am followed because there's no purpose in following someone who isn't friends with me anyway. I'm not expecting anything, Cat. Like I said, feel free to just remove me from your life. Arguing won't solve anything. Did I want you out of my life? No. Did I want to upset anyone purposely? No. I care about you, Cat, and the others. That'll never change. You're the first ones to even talk to me, and because of that, I refuse to hate you or anyone for that matter. I don't have hatred in me. That's another thing. I don't know what I did slash said that upset anyone. I legit don't know what I did wrong. Please, just tell me how to fix it then, so I can at least apologise and attempt to fix it. I'm sorry, Wolfia. Now, thanks to hindsight, we can probably guess what this is about, and we can also probably guess from this screenshot why well, the account name was changed from Pumpkinite to Videl Rose. Oh, really? How old are you? I forgot what it's like, honestly, XD. It's been a long time, lol. I don't mind being single right now because it's helped me rebuild my confidence and learn how to trust people again. Well, don't tell anyone because I like to keep my age a secret, but I'm 25, yet I act like I'm 10, XD. I wish I was lucky enough to date you, to be honest. You're so, so amazing and absolutely gorgeous. It's okay. I won't tell. And 25 isn't bad. I don't meet so many people who are older than me, so I'm glad to meet other adults too. It's okay, me too, honestly, XD. I'm just a lovey-dovey gal on Twitter, lol. A super cute one of that. In June 2017, Videl Rose went inactive after posting a poll asking their followers if she should reveal her new account, to which the majority said yes, and so she moved to the iMilky name. Now, immediately, there was something different about the way iMilky as an account and a persona was run, and it wasn't just the fact that this was her earliest available logs of her new Minecraft account. If I had to guess, this looks like a complete reset of iMilky's online persona as she runs away from her actions, and you'll see a lot of that as we go on. Rather than the frankly pathetic gains in her previous account, iMilky really started picking up some steam, getting 100 subscribers within the month of creation. One of the big reasons for this is that her SMP applications had paid off, and she had been able to join the 100 baby SMP, where you try and get 100 babies on modded Minecraft. No, I don't know why it exists. Don't ask me. Hello, my name is Milky, and as the name implies, I love milk and pink. Yay! I'm green. Play! This SMP includes some pretty notable figures at the time, such as Moondust Bree and Pandafire11, and their names drove traffic to her channel, among many others. She started to gain a lot of online friends, two of the most relevant for later being Smarties Cringe and Roxana Tux. 
and with iMurky's channel rapidly growing, they soon started to gather a presence in the 100 baby SMP community on Discord and Twitter. But again, straight off the back, iMurky seemed to be acting pretty strange. There seemed to be a repeating pattern of asking miners they were DMing to share selfies of themselves. Wait, question. What would you do if I asked to see you? I don't know lol, I'm already meeting one of my internet friends in June 2018. No no no, I mean I just want to see a picture lol, if you don't mind of course. Oh, I barely have pictures of me. No fair, I want to see you. You, just you. I has none, lol. Only that dab pic. Take one then, lol. I hate selfies, XD. The moment I take one, I'm like, so take it, send it, then delete it. Simple, lol. Alongside this, I'm lucky seemed to be pretty suspicious when it came to how old they definitively were. In a comment, Whimsy Kitsune, who organised an SMP Milky was in, said that she only put her age as 18 plus, and never how old she specifically was. This added to the danger that Milky presented to the community, and things only seemed to pile up as the summer rushed forward. Smarty would make a warning tweet after private communications broke down soon after, exposing more information about Milky, corroborating the allegations that Milky was a pervert, and speculation began. This had all started to stir a shitstorm for Milky, who quickly deactivated following the exposure and supposedly left the internet. So there it was, she was gone forever, a danger to the community once again chased off the internet. Oh, she never really went and just changed her name. In late 2018, Rux and Atox would make a video exposing a lot more information relating to Milky and her new personality, as the same behaviour had continued. Hey, I'm not really a friend of yours, but I've been trying to become friends with Ellie and she's been asking me to show my face twice, and acting pretty weird, and I was just wondering if that was normal for her to act like this. Hi, hello, Sars, my internet died. It's fine. Oh, by the way, you should take a new selfie. No, I'm not in the mood. Oh, no. Eh, but I want to see you in a call. I'm sorry, maybe another time because I'll have my computer again kind of soon. Okay, so I guess we can call with just voice then. Can you still take selfies though, please? She asked me to undress in a call once too, which I also said no to. Eh, just ask for pictures of my face a ton and for nudes. Other than that, nothing re else really. Oh, you're cute. Haha, <laughs> don't lie. I don't. You should try again, but with your beautiful face in it, X3. Random question, have you ever done a face reveal? Um, on my personal social media, yes. But here, I've shown my face once, but that was like one or two years ago, and I've deleted a tweet. Why? Well, I was just kind of curious to what you looked like, that's all. Congratulations, I can see that. So what? It's a face, it's not going to kill anyone, and I stopped already. So either drop it, or leave me alone. Smarties Cringe then posted a second warning tweet with a lot more information, seen here. Hey everyone, recently I've been trying to avoid getting involved with drama and bring it out to a public platform, but I felt that I should say a few things since it involves something that I spoke out about a few months ago. Back in late November slash early December, I posted a warning about someone who went by the name of iMilky. She has hurt a great deal of the community and it came to the point where we even had to get the authorities involved and call the police. After I posted my original warning involving her, she got a great deal of backlash, which is reasonable considering how many people she's affected and what she's done. It drove her out of the community and she backed away for a while until she recently returned under the name Tired Ellie. For those of you who weren't around or are not aware of what has happened slash what is still happening, here is some important information that you need to know. Milky slash Ellie has asked countless individuals for inappropriate pictures and has asked them to do inappropriate things, including sending nudes, flashing her, e-sex and much more. Her age cannot be 100% confirmed. She has given out several ages ranging from 15 to 25. It makes her seem as if she's a child predator, especially considering that she targets the approximate age range of 10 to 14 when asking people to do these disgusting things. She's forced people into the position where she'll threaten to take her own life if someone Someone doesn't agree to date her. Milky slash Ellie's done a lot more, but these are the key points that should be listed. You also need to understand that whenever this is brought up, she will normally deny her actions and behaviour, run away from her problems, or say that we are making this up and have no real evidence or proof to support our claims. In fact, we have quite a lot of evidence. When I posted my original warning about Milky slash Ellie, her victims either replied to my post or personally messaged me explaining their encounters with her. They shared their stories and provided screenshots or the proof, etc. We've shared this with the police. We have the proof sorted out. We have all the connections between our different accounts. So her denying everything with a simple statement, that wasn't me, is not going to work. I recommend that you watch one of my old friend's videos regarding her and the situation as well. I'll put the link down below. Milky slash Ellie's been throwing evidence and proof in her direction, but she's been denying everything and lying to cover up her tracks. She is trying everything in her power to make sure that people don't believe us when we tell you the truth. She's doing as much as she can in order to maintain the support and following from others so she can continue her actions and get away with it. I'm posting this simply because another warning should be made. I wouldn't make this public or lie just for the hell of it. I care about everyone and I've witnessed so many people who mean the world to me feel defeated and they're emotionally traumatized because of her. I don't want to see it happen again. 
These are the moments where the community should come together for the good of us all. Please stay safe, and I love all of you. Thank you for your time. And finally, after much hard work from the community, Milky Slash Tidelli have been chased off the internet. A job well done. In August 2018, Milky came up again. This time it was under the name Kurinoko, a VR chat mute Twitch streamer. Ooh, nice try. This is also around the time that Milky's past as a convicted predator still on probation was leaked, and more stuff was piled onto Milky's record. This time, Milky again tried to clear everything, but another DM leaked, showing that she still had plans to return to her Milky persona. I would hate for you to just pick up on a new channel and delete the first episode. Wait, I'm not deleting anything. Like I said, I'd most likely come back as Milky if things don't work out. If I'm unable to join under the new one, then it's okay, Katie. By this time, it seemed as if Milky had got the message. Although many others continued to track her movements and other accounts, by the time Kurinoko was exposed, Milky realised this was nothing more than a glorified game of whack-a-mole. Now, at this point, you might be forgiven for thinking that this would be the end of iMilky's story. I mean, if you get caught whilst being a streamer that literally says nothing, that's levels. But around 2019 to 2020, Milky somehow managed to get a platform. So the question is, how? To answer that, we need to change our field of view to Ruxner Tux. Originally someone who'd done a good job exposing Milky, but after a name change to Loomis Darwin, and a myriad of controversies including doxing, transphobia, and faking suicide, the two would once again amend the bridge they had burnt, both seeking people who could forgive them. In late 2019, Loomis made an art piece dedicated to I Milky that read, I may have messed up my life yesterday, but I'm glad to have my best friend back. Thank you for the support, I'm Milky. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for me, and I'm sorry for hurting you. I swear I will do better. This art piece alerted a lot more people to I'm Milky's presence, who would come back to Twitter and YouTube with a VR chat focused channel with over 5,000 subscribers. This all got the attention of the Lumastarbun A loggers, including myself, and an investigation of the association began in February, once again resurfacing all the information. However, this time, instead of ducking and running, Milky decided to make a video responding and apologising, which is arguably a worse decision than before because of what was said in this video. In this video, Imilky first states that she suspects the authorities had lied when they said that she was caught with over 100 suspected images and videos of CP, and actually she only had a few files of CP. I'm 27 and a lot of you may know about the crime I convicted and why I'm like kind of a little iffy on the whole thing and why I kind of stood away from the internet for a little while. So yes, there is an article online about me. If you want to take a look, I'll link you to it or whatever. It doesn't really matter because not everything under is completely accurate. Like for example, they talk about, if I remember correctly, like over a hundred videos or pics of girls doing things. That's not true. Like as far as I know, I've only had that done with like a few girls and even then have a very vague memory of it. Aimuki also adds onto her amazing point by noting that the police never showed her the CP on a computer, which is, bad even though that's fucking insane to ask for like it's not part of police procedure they aren't obligated or advised to show you that stuff but basically when the cops came and got me they were like oh we're confiscating your computer and we found a whole bunch of stuff they never actually showed me anything they didn't show me any pictures they didn't show me any videos like they didn't show me anything this is also said later in the video with more emphasis and explanation because you guys deserve to know how i really feel and what actually happened Instead of reading some article and be like, oh yeah, that's what happened, and it's what the police wrote, so it has to be true. Just because they wear uniforms and badges doesn't mean they're telling the truth all the time. If that was the case, then a lot more people would be locked up for stupid crap. They could exaggerate anything and get away with it. That's not even true. As seen before, cases where the police have lied have only applied to interrogations, such as that of the Exonerated Five, where the police lied about what they knew in order to get confessions out of the accused. Except those only happened in interrogations to get confessions. When it comes to official documents and search warrants, the police don't lie. Probably because they don't really have to when it comes to someone who is in possession of CP. Milky then falsely claims that they've changed, despite the fact that asking kids for selfies, news and ERP, whilst also obscuring your age, isn't exactly changing. I'm on probation. Um, I have like, this was 2016, like six years left. So by 2026, I'll be free. Um, if I behave in my short end, so if, as long as I'm doing what I gotta do, I'll be fine. Um, but as far as my apology goes, obviously I've made a video like like this before using sprites of my iMilky OC. Um, and I cannot express how like sorry I really am for you know happened. I mean, there's no forgiving what I've done. And regardless of what people think, I like to look forward and move forward because if you spend your life depressed and thinking about all the sad stuff, what does that make your life? 
Like, how are you actually going to be happy and satisfied with who you are and the things you do if you're just going to go hating on people for like, I, this happened like a couple of years ago now and people are still hating on me for it instead of just accepting the fact like, oh, she changed. So we should accept that and help her move forward instead of spreading hate and making the situation worse. Then, here comes the obligatory depression and anxiety mental health mention, because apparently depression makes you groom a 13 year old. We're, like, I don't understand why people think that's going to solve anything. And as far as me making a Twitter, yes, it's a little risky, but again, I'm taking that risk because you guys need, deserve to know that I am deeply and sincerely sorry for everything that happened and there's no excuse for what I had done. Regardless of my depression, regardless of my anxiety, regardless of my sixth sense or whatever it is that happened. But you know what doesn't help your case mentally? Well, what if you implied in the same video that you couldn't control yourself from sexting a 13 year old? Oh wait! Like, I could tell you even from experience, when I was on that Rikers Island, which is in New York, it's where people go for like the prison and such. Even the inmates and the cops, both parties, looked at me and said, what did you do? You don't look like you belong here. Because it was something that happened. At the time I had no control over. Some of you may think I'm stupid for saying that, but I'm being 100% honest here. There was something in me at that time that I just couldn't control. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. If I had to, I'll disable comments on videos. If I had to, I'll mute or block people on Twitter. I will if I have to, but I don't want to. I really, really hate being mean to people. So, just for my closing words here, because I'm rambling at this point. I am sorry, and I want to move forward. And I hope that you guys can actually join me on this journey instead of pushing me away from it. Because it's obviously more meaningful to me if you can actually help me with this. Everyone deserves a chance. Everyone deserves another chance. And a third chance. And a fourth chance. And a fifth chance. Or maybe grooming is just that big of a crime that people don't really deserve second chances from it. You got a second chance and look where it got you. Into the DMs of kids. Anyway, after this, most people didn't really take a heed to Milky because she wasn't as engraved into the art community as Lumi was. Regardless, in May, Lumi, now Rux again, posted another tweet showing the new profile picture she had drawn for iMilky. This got the attention of two people who made videos talking about it, one of them being the art commentator Apple Tree Parfait. My take on this? Not many words, but a few words. This is disgusting. I Milky doesn't need to come back. How can you improve? Get off the goddamn internet and stop talking to freaking kids. Now, I Milky's response to this was again interesting. This time, sick of everything, she instead decided to defend herself, blocking people who criticized her and making multiple tweets defending herself. No more running. I'm sick of it. I have support now, so I want to make things right. For real this time. I will prove that I've changed for the better and put an end to these baseless rumours. I know better than to keep hatred in my heart. You want to block me? Go ahead. I'm done giving up. I really appreciate if people didn't spread false rumours about me. I haven't spoken to anyone underage directly in months, so please don't accuse me, especially when there's no evidence to back up these alleged claims. For the record, Rooks reached out to me, not the other way around. Check with them. I have zero reason to lie about anything. I'm not trying to make a return to make friends with kids. Take that as you will. As I've stated in the past, I want to make content to help others forget about depression and daily drama. I'm actually trying to do better instead of dwelling on the past like most of you are. Okay, I get it. Rooks hasn't been on their best behaviour, but we both have history, literally years of knowing each other, and they came to me for help. If you're telling me to turn my back on someone that came to me for help, then I'm not the one in the wrong here. That article on me is a few years old now. I'm not the person anymore. Instead of shooting me down and blaming me, why not look forward and tell me what I can do to show that I've vastly improved? That'd help a lot more than hating me. Let me make this clear. Arguing and bringing up history isn't going to solve anything. I'm aware of what happened. I don't need constant reminders. It's precisely because of that history that I want to show that I'm no longer that person. I'm not trying to argue or pick fights. Finally, seeing some people that actually view my perspective. Thank you to those of you that are actually trying to give me a chance. I really appreciate it. I promise I'll show progress in some way or another. Does anyone have any suggestions that can help me show my progress? I thought about making another video explaining it, but after last time, I'm not so sure that's a good idea. I'm well aware being on Twitter is kind of risky, but as long as I behave and don't do anything I used to, I'll be fine. Thank you for everyone that's been concerned about me. And to clear this up since everyone's complaining about me talking to minors, I'm not talking to anyone inappropriately at all, minor or not. So please don't come after me for that reason alone. Amazed that I come back to people still following me, not sure but thanks guys. I've come to the realisation that people will never accept me, no matter how hard I try. So fine, I'll just start over where no one can find me. This is not me giving in to haters, this is me being smart about the situation and realising that some people are straight up toxic. This name will forever be tainted, there's no getting around that. And as much as I love my OC Milky, she's gonna have to go to sleep, whilst her sister awakens. Thanks to people who actually tried to help me feel better, but this is definitely the best course of actions. 
I will not be replying to tweets or DMs, so don't bother trying to reach out to me. Take care, everyone. But again, as the tweets appeared and iMilky then left the platform, it became ever more present that iMilky was not really the focus in the situation, but it was Rux. His association to a predator still on probation was utilised as more dirt upon Rux's record, and his defences were heavily looked down upon. Even with all these tweets, iMilky had now been relegated to a disgusting creep looked down upon as a pawn in the chess game between Rux and her A-loggers, and iMilky only existed as long as she had someone to latch onto. So what do you think happened when Rux realised that Milky was nothing more than a blot on her record? I hope you guys have a wonderful day slash evening, whatever time it is, by the time this goes up, or whatever time it is in your time zone, and I hope you can learn to forgive others, not just me, but other people that have done wrong in their lives. If you see them genuinely trying to move forward, no more lies about anything that they've done. They are trying then, and they're worth another chance. But if they mess up again, that's fine. You can do what you want. In December 2020, iMilky returned to Twitter unexpectedly with another flurry of tweets. Why am I tweeting this? What is there to gain when both my life and this name have been tainted beyond repair? Because I have a message, and of course I know I'll receive hate, it never fails, no matter how sincere I am, but it's a message I want people to know regardless of that. I'm a human being. So are all of you. And humans, they make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And sometimes it takes making some in order to mature and evolve from them. To move on and become a better human being. A better version of your past self, if you will. Recovery cannot happen overnight. In fact, it's nearly impossible to recover from certain traumas. Where am I going with this? I just wanted to be treated normally. I've already suffered and I'm continuing to suffer each and every single day of my life because of my history. Maybe I'll recover someday or maybe I'll just reach a point beyond my limits. But you cannot live your life in fear of yourself or your past. You must put that behind you and continue to move on with your life to move forward. I just want a chance to make people happy again. Every single day, I think about what I've done, and there's no atonement for my sins. But that doesn't mean I can't do good in this world. I know I can help people if given the opportunity, I can feel it without a doubt. I used to do it all the time before any of my past. So my message to anyone who takes the time to read this is to please give someone you care about a chance if they messed up and are sincere and genuine with their apology and want to start over. Just because some of us made mistakes doesn't mean we're beyond repair now. I thank anyone that takes the time to read my tweets, my messages, that I'd like for everyone to know. Please, allow me to make people happy again. I've definitely grown and matured since the past, and I've learned that forgiveness comes in time, as I forgive all of you. And to those that have hurt, saying sorry isn't enough. I'm well aware of that. If there's any other way I can atone for what I've done in the past, please give me ideas, suggestions, and I'll definitely do what I can to banish that wound that was made. I want to start live streaming some gameplay, become a V-streamer, then upload my VODs on YouTube. I just hope that I can without the past catching up to me, because I'm trying to leave something positive in this world, not more negativity. We've had enough of that this year. 2020 has been a very cruel year. We've lost so many innocent lives. That's exactly why we need more positivity in the world. We need to preserve and protect what life we have left. Find something positive to do to brighten someone's day. It's definitely worth it. People probably don't want to hear this coming from me, but I'm going to say it anyway. A certain someone I know is making some amazing progress. I've gotten to spend some time with them, and I really think they're starting to change for the better. They know who they are. It's 100% up to them if they want me to tag them or not, but regardless, I'd like to see more people with an open mind with a will to improve. They've honestly deserved it in my eyes, despite the amount of chances they've been given previously. Still debating on if I want to make an actual return or not. I may try V-streaming on Twitch to see how that works out, but I gotta get me a model made first. Dunno, we shall see what the future holds. Probably save YouTube a stream VODs or something. And that was the end of iMilky's activity on that account. Why? Because then Rux and the Tux came in and dropped the nuke. In late 2020, Rux turned on Milky, revealing that they had allegedly done it again and moved towards a new account. Just a heads up, this is iMilky, a known pedophile who'd been arrested for having 100 images of CP. Don't contact them, just report. Yes, I was friends with them, but it looks like they were still continuing, so I ended it and they got mad when I found them again. This is their Discord, please don't add, just be careful around this user. Prove it's I'm Milky. Milky's new avatar this time was under the name of Voidine, a mute AI character that streamed in VR. Again, what can you expect? This was a good move on Rux's part, although he had basically prolonged the situation, ultimately revealing Milky's new account was a good move. This account would also be iMilky's last known alternate alias. So yeah, a good move for Rux, until of course he fucked it all up. In mid-2021, an account by the name of Dokeshi Niko popped up in the art community and garnered a decent amount of popularity, before sadly coming down with cancer during the summer of 2021. Dokeshi asked for money for their treatment and received around $1,000 before making a few tweets implying that they had passed away. And yes, this is going where you think it's going. During late September 2021, many people started drawing parallels 
between Takeshi Neko and Roxana Tux, particularly in how similar the art was. There was also the pattern that Rox was infamous for faking her death multiple times, so the remaining A loggers really began prodding this case and trying to have a look. Anyway, one of the things Rooks tried to claim is that this account was actually iMilky, except that wasn't true, and a month later, Rooks admitted that it was actually them and they are a compulsive liar, which then led to Rooks' last private bridge with Milky burning again. And that was the last time Milky has had any recorded activity online. In March 2022, Rooks posted her own tweet longer accusing iMilky of grooming her, which is the most recent mention we've seen, and it's a difficult read. Not because anything in there is particularly harrowing, but because it's so difficult to traverse a twit longer where Milky's alleged actions are completely in character, but also we're hearing this from an unreliable narrator. For example, Rooks stated that Milky allegedly saved pictures of her nudes when she was 13 in 2017. This is something completely expected from Milky, except the fact that Rooks wasn't 13 in 2017. She was 16, that's just completely false information. There's a lot more information here that does make sense and adds up with the timeline, but I'll let you decide for yourself. Going to iMilky's channel today reveals a channel now deleted. Wiped from existence, never to see the light of day again, and thank god for that. Her current location now is unclear. Rooks claims that he cut off Milky, phoned the authorities, and she is now finally where she belongs. But again, this is coming from the unreliable narrator. That being said, iMilky's current Minecraft account has not changed since being revealed as Voidin. And the last we heard from Voidin is that they were in a critical financial and food situation at that point. The fact that iMilky has a history of leaping from account to account like a flea in a dog pound, and allegations have come up that say that she is still active on VRChat manipulating young men, concerns many, many people including myself. I'm lucky's probation ends in 2026, and it's crazy that for an arrest regarding CP, she didn't get jailed, and if she did, I guarantee a lot less kids would have been harmed. It's times like this where, again, just like with other people, the only thing we can do now is stay vigilant and hope to God that this person is put away. If you encounter someone who may believe is exploiting you or someone you know, tell a person you trust, because when a danger to the crowd blends into said crowd, that's when things get very tricky. To quote I'm lucky herself on the first public tweet we found, Word of advice, guys. No matter how you meet new people, even if they're friendly, don't be deceived. It could be fake. Stay safe, and until next time, stay toasty.